So now that we've got the frame set basically assembled, move on to the wheel set. These things are going to need a lot of work and the rims might be bent. I haven't even inspected them. In fact, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few spots on there that are iffy, but we'll see once we get the tires off. So we'll start with the front, pull the tire off of this. strip is broken that's pretty typical and we have one spoke down and it looks like it broke the spoke nipple must have come unthreaded or something it actually looks like it's all still there but that doesn't really matter um, because I plan to replace these spokes anyway um, they're just uh, They look tapered. I wonder if that's just something with vintage wheels, but I'm going to take all these out anyway, and if I have more, I'll replace them with some new ones and get this wheel trued up. But this tire um, is actually still good, but we're going to replace it anyway, so out it goes. for a couple of days. So I'm going to start wherever the valve stem is. <clears throat> there it is. And just lubricate every single one of these with some bow shield here. And since I do care about the rim in this case, like if I was trashing the rim, I'd just take all the spokes and loosen them like this. But I want to keep some tension on the rim, so I'm going to loosen every other spoke on each side first. Instead of just going, well, I guess I could start with the ones that are broken here. Got a loose one right here on this side, so that looks like a good place to start. Oh god, never mind, I spoke too soon. This rim is wickedly bent. I'll probably have to replace it. I mean, I don't know if you can see that on, you have to be able to see that on camera. I mean, look at that. That is a bent freaking rim. I should have known, should have been obvious with the, uh, Broken spokes being right there. Right at the seam, too. Damn. That's unfortunate. So I guess it really doesn't matter now. But I'll show you the way I would do it if I wanted to preserve the, the rim as much as possible.
That's loose already. So is that. So is that. See, it's not supposed to be that way. This is the front wheel. <clears throat> Curious to see. The back wheel is just as bad. Both of them had broken spokes, so it looks like somebody must have come down kind of hard on this bike at one time. Now I'll go ahead and loosen any other spokes since I think I made my way around twice, at least almost twice. Most of them are loose by hand anyway now. And having the bow shield prior to doing this really helps too. So. Once all the spokes are loose, I just take them out consecutively. I guess I could just cut these spokes too, but um, I may end up reusing them and then just replacing like one if I can't find a complete set or something like that. Um, I should have plenty of wheels around here. Plus, I'm going to need a different rim anyway, most likely. I don't know if I can straighten this rim. I've never done anything like that. I, mean, I don't have the equipment or the precision measuring tools to get that done and do it right. All right. So that's that. Got our rim. Get rid of our spokes. Mark it with an F for front. Now we got those spokes there. And uh, looking at this rim, oh my goodness. Wow. I don't think that's going to be fixed. Let's see what it looks like on the flat floor. Damn. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to fix that. No, no, no. <clears throat> no, without wrecking it. So, let's, uh, so far this is one rim that's going to need to be replaced. That's pretty awful. This is a 36 drill, right? So we got two, four, six, eight, nine. Oh, it might be. It's, it's nine. Yeah, so it's a 36 drill. Oh, and this hub is caked full of mud and whatnot, so it's just going to go straight over to the purple power solvent cleaner tank. Let that thing soak. Then we got the back. So, I wonder if it's going to be the same deal.
Another busted rim strip. No surprise. Eh, this one doesn't look as bad. So it'd be a matter of trying to find one that's similar. This one is pretty rusted too, so if it's so bad and the pits are deep, it might make sense to just replace both rims anyway so that they match. Seems to make sense to me. Lots better. That front rim is toast though. <clears throat> so, something I didn't do that I should have done, and I'll show you why. Because <laughs> you can't get the spokes out to take this cog out of the way. So that's what we're gonna do next. Gotta scrape off some of this old dirt just so I can see what the hell is going on. Usually there's some kind of a snap ring that holds it all together. Um, safety glasses, because this little thing can fly up and smack you in the eye. Once you pull that off, the whole thing slides off, making it possible to take this box out. These things are all caked with mud too, so they don't want to just fall out like they usually do. There. One coaster hub. So I'm actually going to just let this soak. Rear spokes bundled up. Spoke nipples are all the same. So at least I'll have enough for one wheel. drop these guys off in the solvent tank. I saw you say it's the solvent tank. It's not actually a solvent. It's just a degreaser with uh, a defattening agent which tends to loosen grease and well I guess it does dissolve the grease but it works differently than mineral solvents. So this doesn't look too bad. Here's the rear. You can compare the two side by side and you can just see that one is badly damaged and the other is nice and straight. So. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad at all. It's like perfect. That's ready for, the, for cleaning too. We'll see how much rust we can get off of it and how, how deep that rust goes. If it goes too far into the chrome, then might be worthwhile to just replace both rims, like I was saying, so we'll see what happens. So, 
I am going to go wash those wheels and we'll be back right after that. Okay, so got a little bit of a problem here. We were working on the wheels and we discovered some damage. So, as you saw, the one rim is toast um, right here and you can just totally see it's totally bent out of shape. So, I contacted the owner and he's good with uh, building brand new wheels. Um, and he did elect to go ahead and get some double walls. So we got some double wall rims on the way. Uh, nice chrome ones. It looks similar to the other ones, but will perform much better. As far as the hubs and the spokes go, the spokes got to go. Um, we will be reusing this rear Bendix hub. And I'll be showing you guys how to overhaul and repack this. It's not that hard, but it, depending on what design it has, it might be a little different than the uh, more conventional coaster brakes that you see today. And the front hub here is totally trashed. You can see that it's cracked all the way around from excess bearing pressure. And it was about to grenade. And wow, both sides even. There's cracks all over the place. So we will not be reusing this hub. Uh, but that's okay because I have a whole bunch of front hubs and uh, much better ones, in fact. Um, and that'll look just like this. They're not much different. But this one is definitely trashed. So we'll be throwing this away. So instead of wheel work, we got to wait for some parts to come in. So I've moved on to decals um, and kind of getting the frame set finished up here. Uh, I did, I think, find a paint that is pretty darn close to the original here. Yeah, there's a little bit of a difference. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but there's the new paint on the chain guard and there's the paint on the forks. I guess if I really wanted to, I could strip the paint off the forks and repaint those the same as these right here. So everything is the same color, but uh, I don't think it's going to matter. They're pretty darn close. We'll just see what it looks like when it's put together. If it's obvious that they don't match at all, then yeah, I'll often paint the forks, but uh, use the same paint to paint the little center cap for the crank and I'm going to clear coat that before I put it on so and this actually has to dry for 24 hours so I'm not going to be putting this decal on right now this space liner decal I'm going to be focusing on the uh, seat tube decal but one problem I'm having is it's really cold right now I mean look at look at it's freaking chilly there's snow everywhere and uh, I didn't even bother putting any bikes out today because, uh, well, no point. It's too cold, nobody's here. So here I'm just working on bikes inside. But anyway, yikes, that thing is ice cold. It's gotta be 40 or 30 degrees or something, whatever temperature it is outside. It's just, that's the thing about this bike shop. These bikes are just heat sinks basically. Um, so I've gotta warm this thing up. Uh, at least here where I'm going to be applying the decal because you don't want it to be on cold. It won't work. So it's got to be, you know, room temperature, say like between 60 and 90 degrees for this to work properly. I mean, it will probably stick, but it might bubble up and it might fall off if it's not the right temperature, especially if it's way below room temperature, which it is. So what I'm going to do heat it up is just blast it with a heat gun here for a minute and uh, heat the tube up. I'll probably even heat it up a little too much and let the heat spread out through the frame a little bit and then I'll apply the decal. So here we go. the bottom bracket, everything that kind of contacts it directly because that heat will <laughs> travel rather quickly out to the rest of the bike. That's feeling better already though. Normally you probably wouldn't have to do this if your shop wasn't ice cold like mine has. This thing's just been sitting on the floor so 
gets all that cold air and then it's just contacting the floor and getting the, the stealing the heat from that and there we go. It's, it's a lot better now. So. so the next step is to just wipe this down because it still has polish on it. Take that polish. Any residue from the polish will take off of there now. Just get that any oils, any possible way for that sticker not to stick. We're going to remove any chance of that happening. So once this is cleaned with alcohol, that should dry pretty fast now that it's been heated up a little bit. I'd say this is about 90. I got it up to about 90 degrees or so. Feels like a nice warm bath. So with this kind of decal, I'm pretty sure it's not the water transfer style. It's just a double-sided vinyl. So you'll peel the back off of it first centered on there and then peel the front. So it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So you've got to be really careful about where you're going to put it. Only get one chance. I did a pretty good job. These should meet up uh, at the end. I guess I should have mapped that out, huh? Because look at this. Those don't quite. Oh, no, they're pretty darn close. They're pretty darn close. So I just got to keep working it. Just massage it in there, you know get one side done here and then that back paper is going to want to start to peel off of it so I'll have to get that started there why that's not sticking I don't know that concerns me oil or I mean I cleaned everything with the alcohol so just got to peel off enough of it so that I can really secure this part here and then match that from over here okay so I didn't get it absolutely perfect you can see I'm off by about a millimeter maybe somebody's gonna notice that but it's not likely there's not much I can do about it at this point either because it's already applied. There's no going back on these. If you screw these decals up too much, you just have to take them off and order a new one and they are not that cheap, so you do have to be careful. Mostly what matters anyway is the front. And believe me, this is a lot easier than the water transfer decals. They are a pain. This is nothing. 
See, doesn't that look nice? Uh, there is just this little thing here, but you know what? We can probably fix that with a razor blade and a little bit of white paint to just make everything match up a little better. But honestly, I really don't think it matters. It's gonna look good either way. And now it's just gonna have to have a little time to sit and cure. Okay, it's back to this wheel business here. We've got to find a replacement for this. And uh, shouldn't be terribly hard to do. <coughs> what do we got here? These are a bunch of just hubs for the trash wheels that I had, and this one might work well. Now, it doesn't have to be the, um, the same thing as what came out, because we can make it uh, the same, the axle, the same width. We can actually use another, well, this axle's toast, but I can get another 5 16 axle. I'm thinking that's probably, there's one that's pretty close, except for this one is, I believe, steel, steel hub. Yep. And this is an alloy hub here, so that's the big difference, so I'll probably just go ahead and use that alloy hub. Not much else here that's more of the same thing really those are the same about the same hub are they sun tour and joy tech so i don't know if those are the same company or not i think i'd rather go with the sun tour ones personally but um what else do we have in here there's also this uh, formula but I'll probably end up going with the because it's uh, close. Oh, and there's also this one too. Who makes this one? Suzy. Suzui, Japan. Excuse me. That's another another decent one. This one looks a little heavier. Um. So probably the closest one to what I've got. Honestly, it's going to be the Suzui like I had so we'll just go ahead and use this one this will be our front hub in addition to the hub we're going to need an axle as you can see this is a through axle for a quick release uh, skewer but our original equipment is a solid axle and we're going to need that solid axle so that we can hang um, the fenders and things I believe they, they might hang from it I'm not quite entirely sure so I've got in here a box of various axles, uh, different styles and thicknesses. So here's a 5 16 axle that looks like it will work. So I will go ahead and use this one here. And it's got all of the necessary hardware already with it. So that's a plus. So we'll just go ahead and assemble these and repack this guy with uh, some grease. And then uh, check it with the fork to make sure it's going to fit. Oh boy, this is all jacked up. Might not use this after all because of that. We'll see how it goes. Got loose ball bearings inside, which are now falling out, and that's fine. You know, I might not use this hub after all. Got some issues. Spray a little tri flow in there to clean that up. I really like to get in there and just clean out all the dirt and old grease because we're going to put better grease in there. So, all that's cleaned up. close that's pretty darn close it doesn't have to be precise tight one side set the 
preload. And then set your jam nut. Thinking this one now. This is that uh, Joytech one, which is actually a fairly cheap one. Um, there's also Sun Tour. Can't really go wrong with Sun Tour. I just don't know if it's going to be compatible. Again, throw some tri flow at it. And of course, make sure it's a thirty six hole. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Oh, hold on. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 18. This might be a 40. Hold on. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. It is 9. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So it's 36. We're good. Sometimes there's old uh, three speeds were 40. 40 spokes, 40 drill rims and hubs. Good part about this is I can just use the grease, the freshly greased ones here. Just pop them right into the other hub. the grease helps to hold the bearings in. Oh, next would be my seal. Pop the seal back in there. Then the through axle. Or not the through axle, just the regular solid axle. Excuse me. Oh yeah, it's a 15. I keep forgetting. Nice. Perfect. Now that's a lot better. So this hub is ready for lacing. So as soon as those rims show up, let's put this together. And right, it's not so different than the old one. Um, a little bit wider so I probably will have to put smaller jam nuts on the end of this I will just have to see when we put it back on the fork cross that bridge when we come to it